Hello friends and uh, welcome to today's edition of Cichlids and Coffee and I'm Ben Ochart and uh, if you're new to the channel we always start off with uh, with a little uh, a little video that was done for me So, uh, welcome to uh, Cichlids and Coffee. A quick shout out to all of you who uh, sit in on this on a weekly basis and uh, put up with uh, my learning curve. And, uh, <laughs> and also uh, a big shout out to uh, the moderators who helped me to keep this thing rolling, which of course include Kevin Green, uh, Denny, who I'm not sure if he can make it today because he's working, I believe, but uh, GP. And of course, the amazing candy, and uh, they really help to keep things rolling along the way they're supposed to. Uh, if you would like to do uh, uh, something to help support the channel, you're certainly welcome to. You can super chat. I thank those of you who have super chatted in the past, and um, that's a little uh, icon there at the bottom of the uh, chat section where you can actually uh, contribute something to the channel. You can also go to the merchandise. Teespring store and pick up some merchandise. That's also also helps to support the channel. And if you can't do any of that, that's okay too. You're you're greatly appreciated for being here. So um, let's take a quick look here and see who we have here. Okay, I see. Uh, hey, Chevy Fish, welcome to you, my friend. And James Green, hello, James. Michael Ferguson. Let's see here. Kenny Mack. Uh, we already had one uh, message retracted here. Good morning, Kenny. And uh, Brian. Hello, Brian and Neil. And okay, we got uh, Daniel Barrett. Hey, Daniel. And what is that? Cruxor? Cruxor, I believe. Hey, GP's here. Hey, GP. Platy dot, dot cam T M. Love the ocean wave. Yes, yes, I love that. And uh, uh, my friend in uh, the UK did it for me, Phil Griffiths. He's known as Mr. Chips in the UK, and uh, along with uh, Sam, a fellow who did the uh, uh, a fellow who did the actual fish holding the cup, and then he took that and uh, and added the graphics to it, the uh, the FX. So. Um, Wherever you are, I hope you folks are doing well in, uh, in what uh, my wife calls crazy town. Uh, things have been certainly uh, very unusual for us here. And uh, California, of course, is going to go very slow. It looks like in its reopening and uh, where other parts of the country are, uh, are rolling along and you can go visit fish stores and stuff like that. I'm very anxious to get out and do a couple fish store tours. Uh, as soon as I can, I can do them without without having to wear a mask, and uh, so uh, that's going to be happening as soon as uh, as soon as I can get out of you know out of here and go out without having to be covered up. I don't wear a mask when I uh, take walks on the beach or with my family or when I ride my bike. Of course, when I drive things like that, I don't wear a mask. But uh, certainly, if you go into stores here in Los Angeles, I think they still expect you to wear some type of a covering and uh, now there's a lot of data coming out debating whether that really helps or hurts no one's really sure so anyway hopefully we'll be getting back back to uh, back to normal pretty soon uh, Michael Ferguson comes in big with a super chat thank you Michael that's very appreciated um, I'm gonna be uh, I, I was taking the super chats before and using them towards the camera fund I'm gonna talk more about that later because that was accomplished thanks to all, all of you and all of your help. And so you're going to be getting uh, sharper, crisper videos. The uh, first video will be released tomorrow, Sunday, with the new camera equipment, which I'm starting to learn. And uh, so anyway, thank you so much for that, Michael. Very appreciated. And um, hey, Candy. Wasn't sure if you were here yet. Good to see you, as always. And uh, so let's get into... 
let's get into the subjects here and uh, let's talk a little bit about what's been going on and I had a uh, by the way I don't know if, if some of you watched the last live stream but I put timestamps on the bottom of it that way when people come to the live stream if, if they don't necessarily want to hear a wrap-up of the prior week or a preview of what's coming up they can just go right to the to the meat of the uh, uh, of the live stream like the subject that's on the on the thumbnail and uh, so I don't know if some of you watch the replay and use the timestamps that I included if you found those helpful uh, tell me in the comments and uh, I'll, I'll keep I'll keep putting them there because I mean a, an hour you know for a lot of people an hour is just not something they do they don't they don't sit down and watch a video for an hour I know some of you do it while you're doing your water changes and things like that and uh, I know James Largo uh, told me he would do it while working on the store super cichlids has it on the big screen you know they, they do it while they're getting the store ready and that kind of stuff which I think is uh, very very cool very very cool um, James Largo uh, posted something the other day on Facebook and I don't really want to go into the details of what it is uh, over at the cichlid shack let's just let's just have some good thoughts and some prayers and some uh, good good vibes whatever you want to do in the direction of James Largo so that the dilemma that he's going through right now um, gets better uh, he's a good guy and uh, he's going through something no no parent should have to go through so um, at any rate uh, James if you're out there buddy uh, you're on my mind a lot so um, let's talk a little bit about what's been going on um, I had a few uh, uh, I, I finally got that video out of my trip to Nolan's and uh, for some of you here uh, locally, uh, uh, you know, you, you know, you finally got to see the footage and you got to see yourself in the, <laughs> in the video. And it's just a cool little shop. Uh, uh, concentration uh, seems to be on cichlids. He breeds a lot of cichlids, but he also usually has a, a nice selection of angels and rainbows and other types of fish. And uh, his plant selection has exploded. I mean, he's got some great plants now. So that was fun. Uh, you know, my trip to my trip to Nolan's right here. And, uh, and then I, um, I went into that, that, that word that I had left off in the prior video where if you want big, big beautiful fish, I put out that video and then, I, and then I remembered afterwards that I'd left off one key point and that key point had to do with, with uh, patience. And uh, so, I, so I put out this video on, uh, on, that, on that word and I got a, a good response. Uh, you know, a lot of folks agreed. There were other folks that, that um, that added other words like uh, persistence, uh, research, uh, you know, work, you know, do the work, uh, things of this nature. So there's, there's, there's a lot, definitely a lot of, uh, of words that apply. And, uh, and, uh, but for me that, that, that patience boy. And the reason I said, the reason I focused on patience was because when I looked back over my own, uh, and of course everything I do is, is subjective right you can always keep that in mind it's not gospel it's just you know Ben's experiences but um, the reason I used that word patience was because I looked back on uh, fish keeping mistakes that I had made in the past and they usually had to do with uh, a lack of patience where I had rushed something and um, whether it was the uh, bringing about of a devastating disease or um, introducing fish before a tank was fully cycled or uh, putting too many fish too fast. I mean, you name it. Uh, every single one of them could be rolled back to that one word, patience. And so I, I, uh, I did a video on that. And then I did a couple videos on uh, on the the cleaning of the plants, the um, the uh, servicing of my elite cichlid plants. And I know some of you like the plants and uh, have asked me about them. If you contact elite cichlids. And tell them you want the Ben O discount. Uh, I will, uh, you know, they'll give you a discount on plants because they they do honor that. But um, I, the plants had, had had gotten this black, this really, uh, maybe you've had this happen in your tank where where there's a black growth, uh, a black film that gets onto things, and it and you you can't reach in the tank and lightly brush it. It doesn't come off. It, it just gets really stubborn. And uh, I had no choice. I had to, uh, I had to pull it out. I had to pull the, the plants out 
And after trying to scrub them several times, I finally went ahead and just soaked them. And so um, in the meantime, uh, as, as I covered in this video here, this, this, this one right here, the African cichlids, no place to hide. I had, you know, I had predator haps uh, that normally could, could tuck themselves into a plant like is probably going on right now in the tank behind me. And, um, and, and they couldn't, they, they were fully exposed. And so it was, uh, you know, we were kind of off to the races. And, and so I had to really kind of watch things. And, uh, and then the, the upshot of the whole thing, what, the culmination of it, what I observed, what ended up happening uh, was, was covered up here in the, in the African cichlids, can they survive video. That's where I go over what happened and uh, you know, while it was open and, um, and then uh, the reintroduction of the plants. Now, a lot of folks asked me about the steps I took. Uh, they wanted more of a breakdown of how did I get that black stuff to loosen up so that I could just lightly brush it off. And, and then, you know, of course, I soaked the plants for 24 hours in, with prime. Any water condition will do, really. And then I reintroduced them. So uh, some people asked for the steps that I took, the, the step by steps, and I did that. I, so, I, so in the, um, so I have a video coming up that's going to be going into that let me see here and i'm going to do two things here i'm going to i'm going to show you the the thumbnail for that video uh it's called they look brand new but i'm also i'm going to show you a clip from the video because this is the first video that i've actually filmed using uh using this this uh sony uh 6400 which fil which films in 4k and uh, I also used a, 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 what they call a lav mic, a pin-on mic, which you see it on me sometimes. But these are really good, very inexpensive, and uh, give you tremendous uh, sound quality. But you're not going to hear the sound. You're just going to see a little bit of the clip. And I'll, uh, you know, I, I wasn't even paying attention. I was doing some stuff, and uh, I happened to, 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 to check the channel, and uh, it, it, it bumped over 25,000. I mean, if you remember, it's just what a week, two weeks ago, I was talking about 24K and hey, 24K, what a great number, and um, you, you can see here on the, um, you know, up there, it's 24.1 thousand subscribers and um, 4.42 uh, million views uh, with 521 videos. But thank you so much. That that this is a shout out to those of you out there who are watching this, uh, who pushed me up over 25 thousand. That was that that's awesome. And, you know, I'm very grateful. I never take for granted that you folks take uh, some of your personal time to watch these videos and to subscribe. That's very, very appreciated. So um, let's see, this is in the last 28 days, it looked like there were uh, released 18 videos and there were uh, 210,000 views in a 28 day period. So it's, it's, it's catching on. There's, there's, a, there's some momentum there and I thank you all for that. So that was very, very cool. So um, let me catch up here with the, uh, with the comments, which I bailed out of. I bail out of them, then I bail back into them. And again, Michael, thank you for that super chat. Jeff, Jeff comes in with 10. Thank you so much, Jeff. That's very appreciated, my friend. And uh, Hi, Ben, setting up a 30-gallon tank right now as a time-out tank. One of my cichlids decided to take over the tank this week. Any suggestions on how to deal with an aggressive fish? Um, well, Jeff, you know, I, I've, I've dealt with a lot of aggressive fish over, over time. Timeouts, I have found, have very limited application. They only allow the fish that's being harassed to uh, maybe take a break. And um, so... You're going to, um, you, you, it, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to let that fish that was being beat up recover a little bit. I would suggest while you have that fish in a timeout, change around some of the decor and um, mix things up a little bit and uh, give that fish that was being beat up, you know, the fish that were being beat up, give them, give them a chance to heal with some fresh water, you know, some water changes, that kind of thing. And, uh, and then reintroduce that fish. But if that, if that fish just picks up right where, where he left off, 
uh, you're going to have to make some choices. You're either going to have to get rid of some of the subdominant fish that that he picks on. Like sometimes if it's just one fish that triggers him, get rid of that one fish if you, if you uh, you know if you want to. Or you're going to have to rehome, you know, find a better home or different home for that that aggressive fish. And um, sometimes I, I've put a fish in a timeout for two or three weeks. I put him back. He just picks up right where he left off. And so there's something about a fish in the tank. Maybe they're too similar. Maybe there's something that uh, he sees as competitive. Uh, of course, do you have females in the tank that could make it that that could make a difference? Uh, do you have places to hide where the, the the fish being harassed can can get away for a while or be off the radar of the of the aggressive fish? But it's certainly something that all of us who have cichlids have to deal with. So I I, I hope that helped. And. Uh, Let's see here. Neil, um, Neil, I'm not, I, if I had to guess if that stuff I was taking off, off of the decor was algae, I think it, it was, I mean, it wasn't the, uh, that hair algae. It was just a black, hard black film, but it was slimy, like a mommy sort of algae feel to it. So, um, you know, I would, uh, I would say that, yeah, I would say that uh, it, it, it probably is a, a type of algae, and uh, but it, man, it was real stubborn. It doesn't, scr it, and it attaches really well to um, to very very um, uh, you know like like plants that have a lot of detail in them. So, um, and I've said this before about about elite cichlids. The very thing I love about their plants, the uh, the, the lushness and the detail, and you know how how full they are. Also, also creates a great environment for um, for the growth of stuff. So it's a double it's a double edged sword. Uh, you know, I, 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 for the reasons I love it is also the reasons that I have to work a little harder to keep them clean. Some people jumped into the uh, into the video and said, "Oh, why do you have artificial plants, plastic plants, blah blah blah? Put in real plants." And um, obviously, uh, folks that have never um, never had uh, African cichlids that had put on size uh, when the cichlids are small. They can um, they can tolerate uh, they can tolerate uh, plant I mean the plants are okay they they, they lightly nip at them uh, but as they put on size they just shred them absolutely shred them that's been my experience so um, uh, Jeff you say that the, that the uh, the fish is harassing everybody so you're gonna have to make a choice uh, maybe add more fish to spread the aggression out uh, but be sure to keep a, keep an eye on your um, you know on your water parameters make sure you don't get any kind of a spike. In, um, in ammonia and, um, and maybe add some more you may have to, you may have to add some more filtration if you're adding more you know more fish um, certainly maybe add a little more bacteria but um, if he's harassing everybody and continues to harass everybody after you put him back you will probably have to do what I've done I did it with a, with a yellow lab I did it with a um, uh, pseudotrophius back when I was keeping mabuna I did it with a venusus that was insane. Um, so I've, I've just had to find, I've just had to find other homes for some of these fish because no matter what you do, they, uh, they go ahead and go crazy on you. So, um, so let's get into, um, into the meat of the matter here. Let me pull up the right scene here for, uh, for today's topic. And today's topic is uh, floating in air, and uh, very often uh, people will make comments, you know, on the videos about the uh, the water quality in my tanks. And I, and there's there's a, a couple things that that go into that. And um, when you're starting off a tank, and the tank is is um, not quite uh, matured, if you will. Uh, there's going to be blooms, like what they call um, algae blooms or bacterial blooms. You're going to have stuff that's fogging up the water in the very beginning. And um, it, in some cases, I've, I've heard people say that you should just leave that stuff alone. It's all part of the cycling process early on. Don't mess with it. Um, you know, you, you, there's a, a term you, you hear floating around called new tank syndrome. Yeah. And if you just if you just kind of hang in there. And again, we're back to the word patience. If you hang in there, 
uh, things will mature and settle down and that will clear up. Now, let's say your tank has been running for four months, uh, five, six months, and you're still noticing um, a, a bit of fogginess. There's, you still don't have that crystal clear floating in air type of situation. There are some things that you can do. Uh, you, can, you can go with a mechanical approach and add floss. You can pick up what is called uh, batting, crib batting. Uh, be sure you get untreated. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to get what I, I think it's called a fire retardant crib batting. I mean, there's certain crib batting that's, that's treated. You just want to get plain, straight, untreated uh, crib batting. You can pick it up at any fabric store cut a piece of that put it in the in the in the filter where you can have access to it easily either um you know like where you can reach it easily in a hang on back or at the or at maybe at the top of your canister um and and that will help to capture a lot of the fine particles they also have um of course things like pinky floss pinky floss is something you can buy in a roll and um and pinky is, I, I've used pinky, and um, I, I find it to be very, very workable. And uh, the, the thing with these, the thing with these flosses, and whether it's pinky floss or batting, is that you are gonna have to get in there more frequently because they clog up. They do the job, They're, they, they catch everything. And because they catch everything, it could be depending on how heavily stocked you are and how much stuff you had floating around, uh, they will clog up. And so after maybe two weeks, maybe a week in a heavily stocked tank, um, a month at the max, you've got to get in there and you've got to pull that out and, and replace it. Now, in my case, I've finally been able to get to a point where I've pulled them out and I don't replace them because the tank is running very, very clean. So you can go with mechanical with either fine sponges pinky floss or just regular inexpensive crib batting that is uh, untreated from a local fabric store. That is the, the least expensive alternative. The only problem I've had with crib batting is that the it does come apart a little bit and the hairs, you know, the, the long strands, the fabric, will uh, work its way into some of your filters and uh, like some of your sponge filters. So you have to be pulling it off of your sponge filters. So um, for that reason, I, went, I started using pinky floss more on a more regular basis. But you can go mechanical route. You can also go um, with a chemical route. Now, I, I don't recommend that you um, get too much into this in an absolutely brand new tank. Let the tank kind of go through its stuff and let it sort of mature, let it age a little bit. Um, and like I said, about the three to four month period, if it's still uh, a little bit too cloudy uh, for your taste, go ahead and, and use the mechanical route or the chemical route. The chemical route is, you know, you, you have products like Purigen. I used to use Purigen. When my tanks were brand new, I would throw in a bag of Purigen. Uh, this is a Seachem product, uh, Purigen. And, uh, it, it's, uh, and they also have Chemipure. Uh, this is, I think, that Chemipure, I believe, is from Boyd Industries. But these two products are just pouches that you put into your filter, and they, you know, they're sort of like magnets for for uh, stuff that floats in the tank. And uh, the the Boyd industry, the uh, the Chemipure, if it's if you have plants, you'd use Chemipure Green. If you don't, you could just use Chemipure Blue, and uh, you run it for a certain amount of time, then you throw it out. The Purigen, you can actually use a bleach process very similar to the bleach process I used with the uh, plants. And uh, you can recharge it uh, five, between five and 10 times. You can reuse the Purigen. And so you get a lot of bang for your buck if you're willing to go through the recharging process. Uh, you can buy Purigen in pouches. Uh, they have it almost every, any place, you know, Chewy's and, and I think Super Cichlids probably ca carries it and uh, anyone like that. So, um, and if you buy stuff from Super Cichlids, tell them you want the Ben O discount. So, 
Tell me you want the Ben Uchard discount. So um, now I think with Super Cichlids, you get free shipping. Um, you can use the free shipping or the Benno, but over $45, I think, or 50 I forget, it's free shipping anyway. So once you get into the higher amounts, you can use the free shipping and the Benno discount. And uh, so you get, a, you get a pretty good deal at checkout. So um, <clears throat> at any rate, so you can go chemical. Now they also have like, like Seachem, um, I think it's called, is it, is it Pristine? Seachem has some products there are, CCAM has a line of products that are organic and they bind with particles and they, they bind with the particles that are floating in your tank and then it makes them big enough so that they then get captured in your filter. So um, I, I, is it Clarity or, or uh, Pristine or there's a couple CCAM products and if you know them off the top of your head, uh, go ahead and post them in the comments. Uh, and they work. I, I've used those. Uh, you know, you put a cap full in, and uh, it, it, it's it, it's kind of amazing. I had the same reaction with uh, Purigen. I put Purigen in one of my tanks, and like the next morning, it was like, whoa, this thing is like they were literally floating in air. Like, where's the water? So um, it's very noticeable when you have a a, a a new tank that's starting up, and and uh, there's a, there's a lot of stuff floating around. But um, but again, as the tanks mature. And certainly in my case, I've moved away from all the chemical stuff. I have no uh, chemical filtration and uh, no, no purigen, no, uh, no chemipures, uh, nothing, you know. And so uh, the only thing I have, of course, are water conditioners, which I use. Like, in my case, Prime and Safe, two C-Chem products. Even though I like to try some of the Fritz products, uh, if you're a Fritz representative and you're watching this live stream, Send me a bottle. I'll do a review for you. So um, now you can also use UV. Now I have found that UV light, uh, like the kind that you have in a canister filter, like a Sun Sun 704B. I think you can hear my uh, my beagles in the background. They love being part of the uh, live stream. The uh, you can use you can use the um, you can use UV that's in the canisters for clarify. It clarifies the water to some degree, and I have found that it does make a difference. I don't run UVs in canisters uh, for longer than two days because they will actually. It, it, I, I've heard too many reports of plastic being damaged by the UV light. So, um, but UV will give you water clarity. It will actually clarify some of the stuff that's floating around. The UV lights in canisters don't necessarily, if I understand this correctly, uh, kill bacteria and uh, you know things that could harm your fish. If you want that kind of result, you're going to have to get into a uh, an inline um, an inline UV light like a like a twist. These are like 25 watt, and you use a separate pump so that the water flows by the light slowly, and not at you know 500 uh, gallons per hour. It, it goes by, you know, I don't know, 25, 30, 40 gallons, or maybe 50 gallons an hour, 100 gallons an hour. It goes, it goes by slowly, the, and the light is twisted, and so a lot, it, it, it actually is able to impact a lot of the water as it goes through. So you'll have this whole separate plumbing system just for the UV system. And um, those, those apparently are really, really good. They can be expensive. You're going to be in the maybe 80 to $300 range, depending on how, how big of a unit, you know, the size of your tank, that kind of thing. People who keep fish that are very, very, like your saltwater, um, your discus keepers, uh, you know, fish that are highly, they keep fish that are expensive and very sensitive to uh, bacteria, viruses, things of this nature. Uh, these, these UV lights are very highly recommended for those kinds of applications. <clears throat> By the way, if you're drinking out of one of these mugs, uh, be sure to send me a picture. Send me a picture in front of your tank at the uh, ben uh, ben.o.cichlid at gmail, and I'll, I'll throw you into the live stream. And uh, you can pick these up at the uh, Teespring store, and along with hoodies and T-shirts and all kinds of other stuff that have the channel logo. Again, other ways of supporting the channel apart from the super chats that some of you have been so kind enough to do today. So, <clears throat> so 
So you can go filtration, mechanical. You can go, uh, you can go chemical, and you can go with UV light. And of course, what's the other, what's the other tip that I would have for having extreme water clarity? Well, the other tip naturally is uh, is maintenance. I mean, you have to, you've got to, you've got to swap out some of that water with your water changes. Uh, you should do some, uh, you know, you should you should vacuum to keep some of the some of the breaking up particles, uh, you know, get them out of there so they don't get suspended when the fish actually swim near the bottom, and uh, you know, do the work. Be sure you keep your panels uh, clean with your sponges, you know, your mag, your mags or whatever you're using to clean your, your panels. And also uh, be sure that the top of your aquarium, the top panel of your aquarium, over time can build up a lot of um, mineral buildup, in some cases algae, uh, things of this nature. So, and if your light is going through that, uh, through that to your tank, uh, your light is gonna be diffused and you're not gonna get the full uh, the full benefits of the spectrum that you have there. So be sure that the top of your aquarium doesn't have a lot of algae buildup and calcium buildup. So that way you'll get a, a, a better clarity, you'll get a, a better illumination of the fish. And uh, so those are just some other other tips that have to do for really getting that kind of uh, you know floating in air cl uh, clarity. The um, in this tank behind me, of course, this is a very mature tank, what you see behind me. And uh, let me see if I can get a... Uh, there you go. This is a... Um, this is more of a mature tank and... You know, you really don't see anything floating around in there. Sometimes you do. I have a, a very strong power head in there. And uh, that, that power head, when it kicks up, it's a high door that pushes, uh, you know, I don't know, like 3,000 gallons an hour or something. When that high door kicks on, you'll, you'll see stuff uh, floating around in there. But usually it, it looks, uh, you know, it looks very, very pristine, very clear. And, uh, and again, this is a mature tank. And there's the eye biter asserting himself. The... Uh, Right now, this tank does not have the SunSun Sun 704B that it had on it before. I replaced the O-ring on that canister, but I found that my water parameters and water quality were very, very good with just the sump. So I'm just running the sump on this, so I, I don't have that, that uh, Sun Sun that was all filters and mechanical filtration. I don't have that running anymore uh, on this. So it's just sitting under the tank empty. So um, I might put it back in line. I mean, we'll see. It certainly is a good backup. If my pump was ever to go out uh, with the sump, I can throw that, you know, throw that Sun Sun in there, and it'll, uh, you know, it'll hold things over while I get a new pump. So there's the fish, the fish cam, and as you can see, everybody kind of is back to normal after I put the plants back in. I'll move this. It might be a little jerky here, but. Uh, I'll move this so you can take a look at the plants. So you can see the plants, they look really like new. They look like the day I got them from Elite Cichlids. And, um, and that was because of the process that I discussed in those videos. And in tomorrow's video, Sunday's video, I'm gonna go over the step-by-step -step process of what I did. So you'll be able to see that in more detail. So if you have any questions about today's, uh, today's topic, let's go, ahead and, let's go ahead and talk about them. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull up the chat here. If I missed a super chat, I'm sorry. I wasn't looking at the comments. And uh, but if you have any questions for me, go ahead and uh, ask them now. Let's see. 
there's some comments about sound. Are you getting an echo, perhaps? Let me see. How's the sound now? I hear a comment. I saw a comment there about the sound. Tell me a little bit about how the sound is doing now. Candy or GP or one of the moderators. Tell me if the is the sound good now? Okay, so it was when the fish cam was playing, so we must have been picking up uh, it must have been picking up from two mics. Okay. I get it. Thank you for that. I thought I'd disable the mic on that cam. So let's go back here and see if I missed a comment or a question. Candy, thank you for posting all of those links. I appreciate it. A cat sailor. Hey, cat sailor. Ben, I have a 40 gallon tank with an FX6. That's a lot of tank for a 40 gallon. I mean, a lot of canister for a 40 gallon. Wife bought this combo from her friend. The FX6 is too powerful. What other canister filters would you recommend? It seems the FX4 would be too powerful. You know, I think, and I and I'm not I'm not sure. You can check with Fluval. They will respond to you, but. I think you can turn that FX6 down. Uh, turn the FX6 valves down to like 50%, and see and see you know see what you what you get. Just the uh, you know, you can just they they both have like little gauges on them and and uh, like a gradiated uh, scale. Turn it down. Turn it down to about 50%. See see what happens, and. Uh, I don't know if you want to contact Fluval if that's going to harm the, the uh, pump at all, if any of you out there have any experience with that. But I, but I think that those, that those, you know, that the output inputs, I think the reason they have those on there is that you can dial in, you know, dial up or dial down the pressure. So, so check on that. Try that first because uh, that's a great, you know, it's a great, it's a great unit. And when you upgrade, uh, and you probably will upgrade if you get the bug like, like I did, uh, you, that that unit will go with you to you know your 125 you know your 125 gallon. Let's see here. Yeah, there you go. That's what Jeff said. Have you tried adjusting the flow? All of you were already on that already. Let's see, any other questions, go ahead and ask them. And Edgar Rivera, fish look great. Thank you, Edgar, I appreciate that. And Neil says, uh, I have uh, the line, an inline UV uh, plumbed into the outlet of the FX6 to inline heater to tank running 24 seven, seems okay, three months. I was just going to ask a question, but you answered it as I was typing. Okay. All right. So you have the you have the uh, so you have a lot of connections on that one hose. That one hose has both your heater and it has your UV plumbed into it. Now that isn't that FX six running the water past the UV uh, too quickly. You may want to check with the UV's um, manufacturer's recommendation on water flow just to make sure that you're getting the most out of that UV light. Uh, because it, it, it would seem to me that the, the pressure of an FX6 would, would run that water by there so quickly that the UV light wouldn't really be able to, uh, to do what it, what it is capable of doing uh, in the area of eliminating bacteria, viruses, things of that nature, parasites. I mean, I've heard it, heard it does wonders, right? Let's see. So was the um, was the sound was the sound uh, 
wrong when I was showing you a sample of tomorrow's video or when I was showing you the fish tank, the fish tank uh, cam, or was it when I had the picture in picture of tomorrow's video? Which one of those had the sound issue? Let me know because I want to uh, always, always be learning. <laughs> Okay, any other questions for me? Second video, okay. Thank you, Ray. So, um, okay. Because I couldn't, I couldn't hear that video on my end when I was playing it. I thought it was just muted. So apparently it's playing to you, but it's not playing to me. So, okay. This is a little, this is a nuance in, uh, in the platform that I use, the OBS platform. So I'm going to have to get my wits around that because I, I love using the picture-in-picture the -picture video function. But if it's going to be playing double sound, that's going to be very annoying. Okay. Okay. Thank you, R. Baglio. Thank you so much. Thank you, Candy. Okay, good. I think I got it. I think I know what's going on. Very, very good. <clears throat> so anyway, that would be my only concern on uh, using an FX6, using a UV in line with an FX6. I, I, it would it would seem to me that you'd want to get a, uh, a different water pump uh, that would, uh, uh, you know, just a separate standalone water pump, maybe one that can be outside of the tank. They have the ones that run dry and don't have to be immersed in water, something like that, or, you know, something that, that you could, that you could plumb in there that would go slower. But again, look at the UV uh, manufacturer's recommendations on uh, gallons per hour on using the UV. And uh, yes, yes, GP, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. I just gotta, I gotta figure out um, because it, anyway, I'll figure it out. And if we do it again, you're not gonna have that issue. Every week I learn something new with this OBS system. It's, it has a, a, a tremendous number of features a little bit like some of our cell phones, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll never use 25% of the features on our cell phones. They're so feature rich. I mean, who, who understands them? There are features on this, uh, th this camera I was talking to you about, this, this uh, A6400 from Sony. This thing has so many features, I'll never use all of them. I'll, I'll, uh, they're actually kind of intimidating. So, <laughs> unless I became a professional. So, um, Yeah, Neil, if you want to email me, you can. Neil, that's okay. You can email me at ben.o.cichlid at gmail. And uh, that is totally okay. I, I don't respond like within 10 minutes, but I, I do respond. I will respond to you. That's also the same email address that you would uh, send if you have photos of you wearing some of the merchandise or, or drink, drinking out of one of these cups, just send it there. Uh, James, if James, the, the thing on plants, I've heard, first of all, that if you're going to try and use plants for nitrate reduction, that you have to use a lot of them. And uh, very often more than is practical for, uh, <clears throat> uh, for most people. Uh, so if you're having, if you have a lot of ammonia production in your tank, then you have a lot of fish. And so you have to use a very lush, lush, uh, you know, lush aquarium and that's going to be you know mostly plants and uh, to really have a noticeable nitrate so some people what they do is they is they create a um, a separate plant area you know and uh, and and then they they uh, they they again they run a, a water pump through the plant area where it's heavily heavily planted uh, and, and then run that water back or they run uh, plants, you know, they, you know, like an aquaponics, like a big aquaponics section, and uh, to make a nitrate reduction. Um, I mean, they'll help with the nitrates, but I don't think you're going to get in, in entirely away uh, from uh, needing to reduce nit nitrates with things like water change, unless you have a very dense, very very dense uh, planted tank. That might be a bit impractical. Uh, if you if you're running you know like a show tank where you want to have the, the fish featured in there so 
If you have experience with that, you folks out there that have uh, planted tanks, uh, let me know what you think about that. I mean, it, I've, I just have heard over and over again that to make a, a dent into the, um, you know, into the nitrate levels, you, you need a tremendous amount of plants. Now, I do run algae scrubbers. Algae consumes nitrates, and I run algae scrubbers. I have two algae scrubbers in the sump behind me, and I have a large algae scrubber on the 100, and they become very, very thick and green and, uh, you know, very, very lush in one week with algae. Uh, the ones in this tank I scrub out. The one in the 100, I just open it up, and all the fish clean it for me. Uh, they just attack the algae, the pleco, and everybody else just attacks it and uh, overnight, and it's ready to go back on uh, the next morning. They actually literally clean it up for me. So um, so it's very nutritious, And uh, but algae is a good nitrate consumer. Uh, if you want to get an algae scrubber, you can get them from, um, from Santa Monica Filtration, and uh, or you, there, there are videos on how to uh, do it yourself, a DIY, I believe, uh, Joey, uh, the king of DIY, he has a video on how to make your own uh, algae scrubber because they can be expensive. So, um, but Santa Monica Filtration has some very good rugged units you can buy and algae will help to uh, reduce nitrates. But again, if you have a heavily stocked tank like that 100, which is very heavily stocked, uh, you're still gonna, you're not gonna get away from uh, needing to do some water changes. And like I've said in videos before, if your uh, nitrates are creeping, are creeping up, you're going to have to make you're going to have to get water changes that exceed 50% to be able to get ahead in the game and be sure to check your tap because if you have nitrates coming in through your tap you're going to have a very much uh, a losing battle so uh, <clears throat> let's see here so yeah neil it's okay you can send me you can send me an email Uh, Jad, Jad, J Dog, J Dog 67, reticulated hillstream loaches. Uh, didn't the aquarium co op, Candy, you might know this. Uh, didn't Corey up at the aquarium co op have some of the, uh, the reticulated hillstream loaches? I thought he did. And, um, you know, check with them. That would be my first, the first place I would look. Let's see here. Darren, your eye biter is on a mission this morning. He's having a, you know, it's the, the uh, eye biter. The eye biter will go after everybody until the venusis has had enough. And then he'll check the eye biter and the eye biter will go in, into a corner for a little while. So uh, it'll be just a matter of time before the, uh, before the eye biter uh, gets gets checked, <laughs> he'll get a body check like they uh, do in hockey. If you're familiar with hockey, uh, I did notice um, Alco Alco DH. I did notice that my um, nitrates in the 100 uh, came down nicely after I added. You know, after that algae scrubber started to really work and produce a lot of algae. It takes a few weeks for the algae scrubber to, to uh, catch and to mature and to actually start to grow the algae. And uh, I did notice a nice a nice drop in algae. I mean, I'm sorry, in nitrates. Since then, however, I've increased the stock level considerably, and so it 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 doesn't uh, it it. I'm I'm still in that 20 to 40 range. So um, and sometimes it gets a little over that. So I don't know what it would be without the uh, without the algae scrubber. Uh, Ray Cooper. Hey, Ray, I'm glad you could make it. We did start on time, and uh, it started correctly today, so I'm glad you made it today. You use two Aquion Quiet Flow 75s in a 75-gallon tank, crystal clear water, like real plants. Uh, pothos plants work great. Yeah, the pothos are the ones you actually you, you put just the, the roots in, right? The roots go down into the tank, but the plant stays out. And uh, I, I, I've heard they're good. You know, they'll, they'll pull nitrate out. And, uh, and you know, you don't hear much about the, the Aquion filters, 
but um, those things are, I mean, they run. They run forever. I mean, I, I had a, I've been very impressed with the Aquan. They don't get all the all the glamorous press that you, uh, you know, the Aqua Clears and the Fluvo hang on backs. You know, they get all the, uh, all the press, but those Aquion hang on backs are uh, pretty rugged. All right. Any more questions for me? Go ahead and share them. And I want to thank those of you who did the Super Chats. I really hope I didn't miss any of you. And uh, those are really appreciated. They help. And also thank you to those of you who have gone to the uh, merchandise Teespring store and picked up some merchandise. I have noticed there's been some activity there recently. And uh, let's see here. Freddy Vara, where's all the fish? They're probably be hiding from the uh, eye biter who seems to be a little bit on the rampage. And uh, and I do have the camera turned into the plant area because I was showing the plants. But you can see the uh, the eye biter here. Oh, here comes the Venusus. I think the Venusus has had enough and it's about ready to give him a check here. But let's see here. There we go. There's some more of the fish for you. Okay, Vinny, go show the eye biter who's boss. That uh, that fire hap, he's a total beast. But you see he stays away from the eye biter too. But he's a lot bigger and heavier than that eye biter. If he wanted to take him on, he'd probably, he'd probably beat him. Hopefully they won. I'm not in the mood for a lot of lip locking right now. But uh, at any rate, okay, so I think with that, we're pretty much about on the hour here. I want to thank all of you for sitting in today, and I hope you got something out of today's uh, live stream with some of those tips on how to keep your water clear. Uh, certainly, if you have more questions, add them to the uh, comments after this video posts to YouTube. Uh, I'll try to respond to the comments underneath the video. And uh, I'll use those timestamps. Um, if you like those timestamps that guide you uh, to where to go in the video, I'll continue using those. And uh, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Very, very appreciated. Thank you to my moderators, Candy, GP, uh, Kevin, if you, uh, you're there, Denny. I think Denny didn't make it today, but thank you, everybody. And thank you to those of you who are watching. You are greatly appreciated. And uh, hopefully, I'll see you next week. Bye bye.